Welcome to a little bit of playing in the lab, networking with fish style. We're going to go ahead and follow on to that last YouTube, which was a much more of an initial setup, where by the end of it, what we actually had was we had the Spiron Test Center on the left off of Cat9K, sending a unidirectional 100 frames per second stream to the Spiron Test Center port on the right. And the Spiron Test Center on the port on the right off of Cat9K40 was sending 100 frames per second over to the Cat9K over on the left. So that's where we left it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and show you how to use that port that is already there and sending data traffic and actually do a capture. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and first we're going to go into the Spiron Test Center and verify that the two unidirectional streams are flowing between the two Spiron Test Centers, 100 frames in each direction. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to initiate a capture over here on the area that's circled on the Spirant Test Center port that's connected to the Cat9K. We'll wait, we're sending 100 frames per second, and then we're going to stop the capture, and then we're going to view the capture. So let's go do that. So the first thing we see is, yes, we have this stream running between Cat9K10 and Cat9K40 and Cat9K40 and Cat9K10, 100 frames per second, 512 fixed frame length. And so here it is right there, it's all good. So now we're gonna go ahead and go to the Cat9K10 and I'm going to say start the capture. Now we're sending 100 frames per second so this shouldn't take that long so we're gonna stop the capture. And now we're going to go ahead and view the capture. You might get a prompt saying that you're pointing to the wrong location on your Windows file. Um, so just update it to wherever your uh, Wireshark is located. Now, um, in another thing, we actually have private VLANs. These are different ways that you can actually look at this. Uh, this is the default way, so it actually doesn't have the VLAN. Or you can do the profile that I set up, which is the VLAN profile. So here you go. And so now this is very interesting, right? If we notice, so let's go ahead and get this a little bit smaller and this a little bit smaller. Look at this. From a data perspective, the, we are not seeing the source. So we're on the port that is the Spirant Test Center that has host IP address 10.1.2.101. At the same time, we are seeing no traffic sourced from 10.1.2.101 destined to 10.40.41.101. However, we are seeing 100 frames per second of the data traffic in the other direction. Let's actually toggle source. And if we toggle it, what we'll actually see is it, it's, just, it's just not there. Okay? So here's the interesting thing. All of these sources are 10.40.41.101. Why? Let's go ahead and go back to doing this in order that it was received. So why? Why is that the case? Well, the reason why that's the case is when you are capturing on a Spirant Test Center port and you're just saying capture, and that is actually what you're doing as opposed to also telling the device that you are also a spam port. So why is this happening? Why, when we're actually going out, let's go over to the diagram, why am I not actually seeing the traffic that is going out of this port on the Spirant Test Center sourced from 10.1.2.101? Why am I only seeing the traffic coming from the other side? So I'm only seeing my data receive traffic. This has to do with the placement of how we're sending the data and where the capture is. So it's just an important thing to realize that when you actually do it this way and you're sending data and you just use the capture on the spirant, because of where the capture is, it is in relationship to 10.1.2.101 sending data, okay, it's going to miss that. So that's all you need to know. So don't panic, it's gonna miss it. If you truly want this, what I would do is I would put another Spirant Test Center port off of the Cat9K. 
uh, maybe gigabit 1022. And I would actually span the port so that I can see the whole conversation and do it really the, the, the right way so you can see the whole conversation. I do use this from a troubleshooting perspective. I find it very, very helpful. I also, all of my spam ports are always Spirant test centers just because of the fact that it's so easy and I typically am already using that for end host conversation anyway. Now let me show you something real quick. We're gonna close the capture. We're gonna initiate a new capture on the same Spirant test center port, but this time we're also going to ARP the default gateway and stop the capture. So we're gonna go ahead and close this capture. No, we don't want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a capture again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and ARP on all of the devices here. And then if we come down to the bottom, all attempted ARPs are successful. So we're going to go back over to the capture. It sees that it's running. I'm going to say stop. And now I'm going to go ahead and view it. Actually, let's go ahead and go full screen mode so that we can actually see. So let's actually toggle this again. Now, if we toggle this again, what we're actually seeing is, so we say we don't want that, so we're going to go ahead and look down here, and we actually are seeing that there is a uh, MAC address. And what's interesting about this MAC address is it is a 0010094000003. Anytime I see 001094, that's the default MAC addresses that are used by Spirant Test Center. So now we are actually seeing the Spirant Test Center as a source saying who has 10.1.2.1. How do we know that? Because right here it is saying, when we're looking right here, it is saying here's this ARP I'm sending out to a broadcast perspective and I'm coming from the Spirant Test Center which is off of Cat9K10 and I am this sender. I am 10.1.2.101. So the important thing to know about this is that when we view the capture, we will see control pane traffic, which is wonderful when you're using the Spire Test Center to also do any kind of control plane traffic, OSPF, BGP, whatever. So when you are using the Spire Test Center for data, packets only, you will only see the receive. Any control traffic that you're doing, again, because of the placement of where the capture is on the Spire and Test Center, you will see everything. You will see your ARPs, you will see any BGP that you as the Spire and Test Center are initiating.